Hey guys, assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. Now in today's video, we're going to learn how to construct confidence interval, but for small sample size. Now you may have recalled, uh, you see this diagram in the last video. This is basically us constructing the confidence interval for mu, but how do we know this is for large sample size? It's because we are using the Z distribution, okay, as the distribution for the sampling distribution of sample mean. Okay, this time, what happens if we have a small sample size? Right, how small is small? Small is when the n is less than 30. And usually, when the sample size is small, we don't know what sigma is. Okay, sigma is population standard deviation. So how can we find the confidence interval? We just need to adjust the formula a little. Number one, instead of using the z distribution, we now use the t distribution. Okay, remember, this t distribution we use when we have a small sample size. And besides that, as I mentioned to you just now, normally when we have a small sample size, we don't know sigma. So instead of writing sigma, we just substitute it with S. Because remember, S or sample standard deviation is the best estimate for the population standard deviation. Okay, let's do some exercises. In this example one, we're going to look at how to construct the confidence interval for population mean uh, if the sample size is large. Okay. A research firm conducted a survey to determine the mean amount smokers spend on cigarettes during a week. They found the distribution of amounts spent per week followed the normal distribution with a standard deviation of $5. A sample of 49 smokers revealed that the sample mean is $20. A. What is the point estimate of the population mean? Explain what it indicates. And B. Using the 95% level of confidence, determine the confidence interval for mu. Explain what it indicates. Okay, just ignore the second part first, okay? Now let's look at this first part. What are the information that we can get from this question? Okay, first of all, we know that the sample size is large. See, n is more than 30. So we know that the sample size is large. And we know the population standard deviation. See, SD here. Okay, so because how do we know that? Because the, we assume, because they tell us that uh, the distribution of the amount spent follows the normal distribution. Therefore, the standard deviation is actually the uh, sigma. Okay, so we know the stem, sample size is large and sigma is known. Okay, so let's look at A first. What is the point estimate of the population mean? Okay, so now remember, in this story, we don't really know what the population mean is. Remember guys, population mean, okay, population mean or mu is not known, okay? We do not know what the mu is. Because if you know what the mu is, why bother finding confidence interval, right? Okay, so we don't know what mu is. However, we know that the best estimate for mu is the sample mean, right? So the best estimate or the best guess from you is x bar. Therefore, how to answer this? Okay, the point estimate of the population mean is the sample mean. Okay, what that means is the sample mean is, uh, what's it in this one? $20. Okay, so $20 is the best estimate of the population mean. Okay, then the next question. Okay, find or construct the 95% confidence interval for mu. Okay, so remember what we learned in the last video, okay, uh, there are two parts, right, there are two parts uh, to the formula. First of all, we start with the point estimate, okay, point estimate, and then because it's an interval, plus minus, what, margin of error, okay, right, so, okay, I think, uh, let me be a bit centered, okay, so the point estimate from mu is x bar. All right, plus minus. Now, margin of error consists of two parts, right? One is the confidence level, okay? And then the second part is standard error. Okay, so confidence level for a large sample size is Z. Standard error is sigma because we know, right? Then sigma is known. So sigma over the square root of N. Okay, so in this question, our X bar, we've determined it just now is 20. So it's 20 plus minus Z. Now remember now, if it's 95%, okay, if you memorized it, good. Otherwise, we need to solve. Okay, remember, please know how to find the Z value from um, a given probability. Okay, so for 95%, the Z is 1.96, right? 
okay, 1.96. Okay, the sigma is $5 from this question over the square root of, okay, what is the sample size in this question? 49. Okay, so we just put it here, 49. Okay, so now let's solve it. 20 plus minus 1.96 times 5 over 7. Okay, so anyway, um, shortcut straight away. We can find that the answer. Okay, hold on. All right, hold on. Okay, I need to center this. Okay, I'm really sorry, guys. I got myself a new tripod. Um, so I'm still in the trial and error phase, okay? Okay. So now here we get, um, okay, you press the calculator and try to work it with me. 20 plus minus 1.96 times 0 0.7143. So the answer would be between, between um, $18.60 and $21.40, okay? So remember, this is how we write the answer for a confidence interval. It has to have two values. Okay, sometimes if you don't want to write in sentence, you can just put 1860 comma 2140. Okay, so now they also asked you to interpret. Okay, explain what it indicates means you have to interpret this. Remember in the last video, I showed you how to interpret. Very simple. Okay, since here we are calculating the confidence interval for a 95% confidence level, we can say that we are 95% confident that the true value of mu lies within this interval of 1860 and 2140. Okay, so now let's move on to example two. This time, we're going to construct the confidence interval uh, for mu, but for a small sample size, okay? So the CGPAs for 10 randomly selected students are assumed to be normally distributed. So they give you a list of uh, 10 CGPAs. Now, the question is, find a 98% confidence interval for the true mean. Can you conclude that the population mean is equal to 4? Explain. Okay, first things first, what we need to do is to construct a confidence interval. Okay, what do we need to find just now? Finding the 98% confidence interval for mu. Okay, but this time around, we have a small sample size. So the formula, we know that to find the confidence interval for mu, the point estimate for mu is x bar, right? plus minus now because since we have a small sample size we need to use the t distribution okay t distribution and also we assume that since it's a small uh, sample and from this um you know the, the story we don't really know what the population deviation is so we don't know sigma therefore we need to estimate it using s over the square root of n okay so this is the formula so what do we need we need x bar do we have x bar from this question? No. So that means we have to calculate the x bar first. Okay, x bar is simply the sum of all the x values over n. So what you need to do is, okay, why don't you do it with me? 2 plus 3.2 plus 1.8 plus 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 0 0.8, all of this divide by 10. So what will we have? Yes, yeah, so we will have, here is about um, 25.4 over 10, so our mean or sample mean is 2.54 okay right so what else do we need we need x bar okay t I'll, I'll show you how to read the table later s now we need to find s okay s uh, takes a while okay so here i'm just going to give you the uh, the quick or the shortcut answer so you go and pause this video and work out how to get the s remember how to get the s is basically each and every one of these values okay you minus the mean Okay, you minus the mean, you square it, you add them all up, you divide by n minus 1, and then you square root it. Okay, for example, 2.0 minus 2.54 square plus 3.2 minus 2.54 square. Go on and so forth. Divide it by 9 square rooted. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to share with you the answer. Okay, the formula for S here uh, is x minus, okay, each and every value just now minus the sample mean okay square it sum it so it's called sum of squares over the um, stand, sa sample size minus one and square root so you will get 11.084 over 9 square rooted so you will get 
1.1098. Sorry guys, I can't really show the working here, otherwise it will take too long, okay? So you need to do this on your own so you can check your answers with this one. Okay, now let's go back to the question. We need to find 98% confidence interval for mu. So now we have X bar, we have the um, sample standard deviation, so we just need to input it inside this formula. Let's do that. 2.54 okay plus minus okay t okay i'm going to show you how to read the table later t um times what is s 1.1098 over the square root of 10. okay now let's read the t table okay guys so this is the student's t distribution table okay as you can see it looks very different from the z table okay this is the z table the Z table, of course, here has all the Z values on the outside and inside here are all of the probabilities. Okay, so this is our T table. Okay, so how do we read the T table? Okay, uh, to use the T table, you need two things. One is you need this thing called the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is simply sample size minus one. Okay, you can read more about the concept of degrees of freedom later, but for now, let's just focus on how to solve this question. Now here, Notice that we have confidence intervals and we have level of significance. Okay, for now, just ignore this. We will use this part later under the hypothesis testing chapter. For now, just focus on confidence interval. So for our question just now, we need to construct a 98% confidence interval, right? So let's look back at the table, look at 98%. See here, 98%. And then degrees of freedom is sample size minus 1, right? So just now our question is sample size is 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9. So here's 9. Here is 98%. So we will get, this is our T value, 2.821. Okay? So 2.54 plus minus 2. Point, oh gosh, I forgot. 2.821. 2.821. Times... 1.1098 over the square root of 10. Okay, you guys can pause this video and work this out. I'll share with you the answer. Okay, so the answer is 2.54 plus minus um, 0.9901. So you'll get the answer is between 3.53 and 1.55. One is missing. Okay, right?